Hi guys, today's video is about RGB LEDs. You can buy a pack of 10 RGB LEDs and a Raspberry Pi Pico for the price of a Big Mac meal. We'll be using PWM, pulse width modulation. We'll also explain the gamma correction and how we perceive what our eyes and ears are telling us. And we'll also make the world's largest RGB LED. Allegedly. We'll make a RGB LED circuit and we'll also play a theme tune on a speaker using PWM hooked up to the same circuit we used to light the RGB LED. We'll also be showing common anode RGB LEDs and common cathode RGB LEDs and fading them through the colours of the rainbow. We'll also show you how to get the code and two ways to get it onto your device. We'll use a Raspberry Pi Pico and a Pi Maroni Tiny 2040 in which we'll light the onboard LED. We'll show you how to use the code and explain it. It will be really colourful and full of rainbows. Let's get the code. So if you want to head over to our repo, link should be in the description. Then you can download the zip. But I'm just going to copy this. Go into the shell. And then CD into our desktop. And then go git clone. And then paste what I've just copied. Okay, you can see it's come up here. Now I'm going to CD into the PicoPi, and then I'm going to go MicroPython, then the RGB LED, and then if I go LS minus AL, there is all our files. We are going to put the code on a Raspberry Pi Pico and a Pi Maroni Tiny2040, and I'll do it two different ways. So let's start with the tiny. If I just plug it into my Pi. I'm going to use Ampi or Ampi. Um, I've done a full video explaining everything about Ampi. But briefly, the instructions on the page we were just on. You can either go to their page or just pause the video and have a look right now. Now I'm going to move the files onto the Pimeroni Tiny2040. So let's list the files in there. So I'm just typing mp minus p forward slash dev forward slash tty a c capital A capital C capital M zero. And then I'm going to go ls because I want to list the files. Just a little tip if you don't want to keep writing this, um, forward slash dev tty business um, you can just set an environment variable so you should go export mp underscore port all capitals equals forward slash dev forward slash tty capital a c m zero now i can just go mp ls and we don't need all of this here so now I'm just going to go mp put, let's go main, main.py, let's go mp put rgbled.py, okay then let's go mp ls, and you can see they're on there now. Now let's run them, so let's go mp, well I'm going to run main.py, so I'm going to go mp run main.py. Okay, it's working. If we could turn off the lights. Now let's put the files on my Raspberry Pi Pico using another method. So let's start by unplugging the Pamaroni Tiny2040 and plug in my Raspberry Pi Pico. There we go. So we're going to open up the files using Fonny. So into here. So let's go that and that. Open with Fonny. There we go. So we've got both files open with Fonny. I'm just going to change these numbers here because these are the GPIO pins and I'm using different GPIO pins in 18, 19, and 20. I'm using 0, 1, and 2. You'll have to do this too. So let's go File, Save As, 
and then on the Micro Python device, which is my Raspberry Pi Pico, and then we'll save it as main.py. Enter. We've now got main.py on our Raspberry Pi Pico. Now it's time for rgbled.py. So on this we just go file, save as, and then my, my Micro Python device. They will save this as rgbled.py. Okay, it's saved. So if I go to main.py, pause it, and then run it, you can see it works. Okay, so I've just stopped the code, so then I can go into REPL mode down here. So let's import RGBLED. But I'm not going to go onboard LED, I'm just going to go LED to keep it short. So RGBLED dot caps RGBLED. And then we set it to my GPIO pins. You put yours here, because um, yours might not be um, Lord 1 and 2 but mine are. Now I'm gonna go LED dot set color. So I guess you already you already know what this will do now. And then we put a hex number in here, so zero X. Then I'm gonna choose red, so that's FF0000. Enter, it's turned red. Let's do blue, so that's 0000FF. Capitals, remember. Nice blue. So now let's go C equals RGB LED dot RGB LED dot spectrum. The spectrum is from 0 to 255. What I mean by spectrum is this image here. So you can see it goes from red to violet. So that'll be the spectrum but just in numbers instead. So let's put any number from 0 to 255. Let's go 1, 2, 8. So that should be near the middle of the spectrum. But obviously it won't light up yet because we've just created a variable. We've not done anything yet. So we need to go LED dot set color. And then in here instead of putting a hex number, we can just put C, which is this here. Yeah, so that's around the middle of a rainbow with that lovely cyan color. If you want to view what that color is in hex, you can just go hex and then in brackets put C. And that is the hex number. Okay, let's do another one. So let's go 255, top of the spectrum. Okay, so lovely, ready, blood colour. One more, let's go 234. Oh, that's a lovely colour. I quite like that one. This is a common anode LED. And this is a common cathode LED. So if I just unplug this, and then with a cathode, it needs to be connected to ground, not power. Switch that around, and then plug in our common cathode LED. Oh, so small compared to the other one. For circuit, let's start off with resistance. Feel free to calculate the exact resistor needed for this, but I just use around a 220 to 330 resistor, so they, that should do the job. Anyway, with a common anode, the three smaller legs need to go through a resistor and then to their own GPIO pin of your choice. Remembering it has to be a PWM. Now with the common cathode, it's relatively the same thing, but then the long leg, instead of going to positive, it goes to negative. Okay, so I'm just going to do what I did before, import RGBLED and then do a couple of lines of code I did. So let's do red. Now, it doesn't show red. That's because it's a common cathode, not a common anode LED. So, when we did LED equals RGB LED dot capital RGB LED, at the end of here, we need to put comma and then false, capital F, false. And then if we run it again, you can see it turns red, which is pretty nice. Okay, so let's just quickly do another color just to test it's working. Now, something really cool we can do, in here we can go comma, true, 
comma, then a digit, so from 0 to 1. Let's go 0 0.5. And basically what it does is it fades the LED, so you can see it's got fainter. Let's go really faint, let's go 0 0.1. <laughs> that's quite dim. Let's go back to 1, full brightness. Wow, that's bright. Let's go to 0 0.6. That's a bit dimmer. Let's go back to 1 again. I need to tell you about gamma. So, right now gamma's on, so let's just turn it off. So instead of true, we'll go false. So gamma is off now. And let's go brightness 0 0.01. We're at 0 0.01. And if I go 0 0.02, changing it by 100, you can see the brightness go up, 0.04, you can see it go up again. Well, actually, I don't know whether you can see it on the camera, but I can see it. If you have equipment to do this, please go try it out. So let's go higher on the scale. Let's go 0.5. Let's go 0.51. I cannot see a difference there. Let's go from 0.5 to 0.6. Still can't see a difference. Before, in the lower um, stages of the chart, if we change it by a hundredth, you can see the brightness go up or down. But now we're in the higher stages, you can't see it even if we change the brightness by a tenth. Let's turn gamma on and let's go back to zero. So the light is off. So let's go to 0 0.1. 0 0.11. Let's go from 0. Point, let's go to 0 0.17. And then 0.2. So you can see. If I go to full brightness and then go to half brightness, 0.5 that is, you can see that's roughly half of full brightness. So if we go half of that, 0.25, that's half of that. That looks like a quarter of full brightness. So it evens out the scale. That's what gamma does. What do we mean when we talk about gamma correct? Well, let's take a step back. Let's say you are adjusting the brightness of an LED with a dimmer switch, for example, from dark to light. You'd expect that if you made the maximum adjustment on your dimmer switch, it would increase the intensity to its maximum. And if you adjusted the dimmer switch 50%, then it would increase the intensity by 50%. So you'd expect that the adjustment you make to your dimmer switch would affect the light intensity at a steady linear rate. However, if this was the case, something would seem off, like you'd made a mistake. This is because the way that our sensors work is in a logarithmic way, like this. Before we continue, if you find this topic interesting, I've got a video on voltage dividers, and this goes through things like this, as well as the difference between logarithmic and linear potentiometers, and why you might want to use the different ones. So if you're interested, feel free to check that video out. Let's talk about the lower end of the intensity, let's say sound intensity. If you heard someone breathing and then someone started whispering, you'd notice the difference in sound intensity. You'd also notice if someone started talking very softly than if someone started talking a little bit louder. And you'd notice those fine adjustments in sound intensity. In fact, we are so sensitive to these small adjustments that our eardrum can detect the vibration of less than a width of an atom. However, on this end of the scale, let's say you were listening to two lawnmowers and the difference in sound intensity between these two lawnmowers was the same as between someone breathing and someone whispering. I doubt you'd notice any difference in sound intensity there. It would almost have to double before you even noticed any difference. What if you had a tin of beans that was half full and then a full can of beans. I think you'd notice the difference between the half full can of beans and the full can of beans. However, if you had two massive bags of shopping and in one you had a full can of beans and in one you had half a can of beans, would you notice the difference? Probably not. Finally, I have a square here with five dots in and without even having to count, you could probably tell that this square has 10 dots in. It has five more dots. And so it's pretty easy to spot the difference between the two. However, there's the same difference between these two squares as there are between these two squares. But these two squares look pretty similar. But these, this actually has 20 dots in and this actually has 25 dots in. And it's not a bad thing, it's actually a good thing. And it just means that we're finer tuned on this end of the scale than on this end. This is where gamma correction comes in. I'm not quite sure why it's called gamma correct because it doesn't really have much to do with gamma. But this is just what most people call it. Let's say you have a certain amount of bits or bytes to store some data. You can gamma correct, so you gamma encode your data, so you have more detail on this end of the scale where you'll really notice those slight adjustments. And on this um, end of the scale, you take less detail because um, you wouldn't, where you won't really notice any difference. 
and you sort of squish down and compress this side of the scale and then sort of stretch out this side of the scale where you have more detail. So you gamma encode that and you can store that and then you can gamma decode that and sort of stretch it all back out so then you'll have less detail on this end of the scale and more detail on this side. We're not going to do that, but instead we're going to map out this curve in our code. So if you want a 50% adjustment, if you give us a 50% adjustment, we'll give you this light intensity and hopefully you should perceive it as this light intensity. So nothing should seem off. Let's say you wanted a 25% adjustment, we'd give you this light intens intensity. Um, hopefully you should perceive it as this intensity. So to you, it should be adjusting at a steady linear rate. It's not right, but it looks right. And we've just done it by using a cheap um, lookup table in our code, um, which is an advantage in some ways because we can actually see it in our code and we can make adjustments to it and play around with it, which is pretty good. It's also worth mentioning that we've got three LEDs, red, green, and blue, contributing to the brightness. Um, so we might revisit that and remedy something, but for now we're just hacking. Whoa, guys, look at this. This is, I've got the world's biggest RGB. LED. How cool is that? No, you haven't. It's just three LEDs underneath some blurry paper. Oh, I guess you're right. Um, I did this to show you guys what's actually happening inside an RGB LED. As you can see, it's just red, green and blue LEDs flashing at different times and fading at different times. We couldn't even find a good LED for the green one. So you can see here, it kind of blends the colours together, like the outing layer of this LED does. So this is the same code as we were using before, except I just switched out an RGB LED for three LEDs, a red one, blue one and green one. Currently these LEDs are all common cathodes because all of their negative legs are all connected. If you don't know how the breadboard works underneath, go check out our breadboard video. Let's turn these LEDs into a common anode, so all their positive legs are touching. I won't bore you with me redoing the circuits, so I'll catch you when I've finished. So I've just flipped around the LEDs, so now all their positive legs are connected, so they're all in the same row. I've also um, moved this wire here from negative to positive. And in the code, I need to just get rid of this false, because they're not a common cathode anymore. Okay, so let's just run it. And there you go. You can see it goes from red to green, green to blue, blue to red again, and then repeats. Just for fun, I'm going to hook up my speaker to my Raspberry Pi Pico using the same circuit. So I'm just going to unplug this LED and then plug my speaker leads into the same holes my LED is plugged into. Ground goes into the same hole down here. Okay, I'm just going into rep them now and I'm setting pin 2 as a PWM pin, because that's what my speaker's plugged into. I'm going to talk about pulse width modulation. So we'll have a frequency, which is just how many pulses there are per second. And I've just labelled each pulse here as X. So you can see over here we have four pulses, and I've just labelled them down here just for reference later on. Um, and then you'll also have low and high. Low is zero volts and high is 3.3 volts, I think. Um, and then we have the duty cycle, which is how long we're high for. So let's say we have a duty cycle of 100%. That means we're high 100% of the time. So this here. So if we had a duty cycle of 50%, and that means that we're high for half the time and then we're low for the rest of the time. So for each pulse, we're high for 50% of it and then low for the rest. High for 50%, the low for the rest. So if we had a duty cycle of 25%, that would mean that we are high for 25% of the time and then low for the rest of the time. So we're high for 25% of our pulse and then low for the rest high for 25% of our pulse, and then low for the rest. High, low, high, low. The duty cycle is a uint16, which stands for unsigned integer 16 bits. It depends on what device you're working on, but that means that your duty cycle should be between zero and two to the power of 16 
minus 1. So that means it's between 0 and 65,535. Then if your duty cycle is 50%, that means it's just going to be half of this number. I'm setting the frequency to 440 hertz. I've just set the duty cycle to be 50%, which is half of this big number. Okay, this is it. You can see it's 440 hertz, and it's an A4. I got a bit carried away with this and made it play our theme tune. I've done another video going through the whole process of this, from no lines of code to the finished product, so be sure to check that out. But for now, let's run the code and let's have a listen. My brother's about to take you through the code in just a sec, um, but I appreciate some of you might not want to stick around for that. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, for the rest of you who are still around, my brother's going to take you through the code just now. Let's go. Let's have a look at the code. So here we are setting the frequency of the pulse. I've set it to 4000, it doesn't have to be 4000, you just got to pick a number high enough that you don't see the light flickering. For example, I could have picked 1500, but I picked 4000. This number here is a duty cycle, um, it's a 16 bit integer, what I mean by that is if you do 2 to the power of 16, you get from 0 to 65535. Here we are just remembering your pin number here we're just remembering if you have a common anode or not here is a function all it does is turns off the led we didn't use that today here we set the duty cycle to zero if that's a common cathode um but if it's a common anode you do the opposite so we set the duty cycle to 65535 which is the max the big number up here which would turn it off if it's a common anode. Here's another function that we didn't use today. What it does is it makes a hex number out of a colour made from red, green or blue. It's been done twice so you can use it with the English or American version of a spelling. Here is the main function. Up here we're setting the red, green and blue. This is the intensity. Here we're making an integer out of red times the intensity of it. Green times intensity and blue times intensity. This is just a quick and dirty gamma correct. So if we go up here, all it does is if you want the brightness to be, let's say, 81, it would pick the 81st number in this list. So here we're making the step by getting the big number and dividing it by 255. So you can see we've got the step and timesing it by red step times it by green and then timesing it by blue for blue green or red um but up here um if it's a common anode we kind of do the opposite so we do the same calculation here but then we take that away from the big number to get full brightness if we chose 255 what else here we've got the spectrum so we've got the rainbow where is it the rainbow here split the rainbow into three sections so we go from full red fade out and go to full green then we go from full green fade it out to full blue then we go from full blue fade it out to full red and we're back over here again and don't really know to know about this this is just old code you can look at it if you want but it's just old code that we were using earlier. So yeah, that's about it. Hey, yeah, look. Someone's made it to the end. Oh my God, hi. Hello. Hi, you're our favorite viewer because you sticked around to the end. Well done, thank um, you. Because you're a favorite viewer, please like and subscribe because yes. you're our favorite viewer. Have a good day or comment something so then we know who stick around to the end. Blue, put, put a blue heart emoji. Yeah, blue heart emoji. And then we'll know you stick around to the end. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have, Have a good, good day. day. Bye. Bye. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. Hello.
Sí, 